Hey there all you Britlet Badgers! For this assignment, you'll look at three examples of existential poetry. You'll read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow from Macbeth, Out, Out by Robert Frost, and To Be or Not to Be from Hamlet. Although you'll have the written form of these three, you'll also be able to listen to the recited version of these poems to help you better understand them. Let's get going. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by William Shakespeare from Macbeth, Act 5, spoken by Macbeth. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Out, Out by Robert Frost The buzz saw snarled and rattled in the yard and made dust and dropped stove-length sticks of wood, sweet-scented stuff when the breeze drew across it, and from there those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other, under the sunset far into Vermont. And the saw snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled, as it ran light or had to bear a load. And nothing happened. Day was all but done, call it a day. Oh, how I wish they would might have said, to please the boy by giving him the half hour that a boy counts so much when saved from work. His sister stood beside him in her apron to tell them supper, at the word, the saw, as if to prove saws knew what supper meant, leaped out at the boy's hand, or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand, however it was, neither refused the meeting, but the hand. The boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh as he swung toward them, holding up the hand, half in appeal, but half as to keep the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all, since he was old enough to know, big boy doing a man's work, though a child at heart, he saw all spoiled. Don't let them cut my hand off. The doctor, when he comes, don't let him, sister. So, that the hand was gone already. The doctor put him in the dark of ether. He lay and puffed his lips out with his breath, and then the watcher at his pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart, little, less, nothing. And that ended it. No more to build on there. And they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs. To Be or Not to Be by William Shakespeare To be or not to be, oh, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Oh, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. 
there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pings of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might his quietest make with the bare bodkin, who would fartles bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action.